is five bucks. The five dollar all star meals. Stop by Carl's Jr. and get yourself one today. Price of participation may vary. Price is higher in Alaska and Hawaii. Tax not included. Before we go any further in the podcast, I'm going to you right now the reason why I'm speaking to you, like as if I have been chained to the bottom of a cellar, as I have been chained to a broom closet, and I'm facing four or five hours of agonizing rape, is <laughs> because I am, yeah, but no. The reason why is because I'm actually in the university library. And so, because of that, I actually, because of that, I actually can't talk as loud as I want to talk right now. So, I'm keeping my room to, I'm keeping my tone to a silent and calm mode, somewhat reminiscent of Morgan Freeman when he narrated Planet Earth. I think Morgan Freeman narrated Planet Earth. No, that was David Attenborough. I think it was. Dude, I watched this one dope. Video. Oh, dang it. I watched this one dope video of him narrating this about how this frog. This frog was running away from this cobra, and the frog went into the water. But then the cobra followed him in the water, like on some sea, on some like some sea lock and mini locks and this monster type shit. And so, like when it went into the water after him, he is the, the the frog. He escaped. He escaped that. He escaped that danger. He escaped. He escaped that dilemma, only to face the jaws of this gigantic ass toad called. I think it was like an African bull. African no no what, what the fuck was he he was a no no he was a toad but he ended up gun running away and ended up getting eaten by this African bullfrog which is weird because I don't that was all makes me wonder is cannibalism really a thing amongst animals completely unrelated completely unrelated last night I was staying up all night and I watched Lord of the Rings the two towers I don't know if you ever seen that film you know it's even if you're not a nerd, I think it's still a cool film to enjoy, especially with your little everything, you know, if you want to just take a time to have a cool now, there ain't no sex scenes in it, you know, but there's, there's something dope just to make, keep your brains little full. And there was this one part in the film, oh, what's going on with you, by the way? Welcome to the People's Paradise Podcast, by the way. What's going on with you? I didn't even do an intro. I didn't even do an intro. And I apologize about that. Really. Really just focused on keeping my voice to a low minimum right now. Because the last thing I want is to be kicked out for disturbing the peace. Which I have never had. I've recorded this podcast in the Starbucks, University Library, McDonald's. Um, I recorded it at a nightclub last week. Believe it or not, last week I recorded it at a nightclub. And they actually was pretty cool about it. You know, they was fucking with me. Shout, shout out to the, um, what's, the, what's that place called? What is it called? I was just, what is it called? Really dope ass spot to go kick it and have a few drinks with and talk about how the Raiders are losing. I mean, actually, the Raiders are lo- winning this season, but what? What's the name of that place? It's called the um. What is the name of it? It's Ace of Spades Lounge. No, Ace of Spades is in Sacramento, but it's not even there. The point is, what's going on with you guys? How you doing? For those who listen to me on YouTube right now, I apologize that I'm not going to be able to. You guys ain't going to even see the video of me. The reason why I'm doing this in audio format is because I just I'm in a rush to my day job. And, I'm working a graveyard shift, and my graveyard shift requires me to travel three cities away from where I'm at, where I live at. So, I ended up being here like hella early in this city, and got nothing to do, so I decided to bring my microphone, bring my equipment with me, and I decided to record and have a conversation with you guys, just because I miss you guys. I I, I really just need, I'm, I'm in need of presence and need of ears to hear my woes and my, my tragic complaints about how terrible my life is, and so, here I am. But no, I'm... It's been pretty dope so far. Um, got a lot of stuff done yesterday. Uh, to those who to those who were watching me on Instagram yesterday and saw that I was kind of freaking out a little bit, you know, I was kind of going through my little emotional highs and lows. It wasn't that I was trying to scare you. It was just like I just was kind of depressed because I was like, you know, you know, obviously I don't enjoy doing this job. You know, obviously not the podcast, but like this the job that I'm working to support the podcasting. And so I'm always waiting to I'm always thinking about when am I going to get to the point to where this is the way that I support myself. This is the way that I do so myself. Like, well, in other words, when am I going to reach the finish line of my dreams? And I don't know. I've always been thinking about that lately. I've been thinking about that a lot lately. And I'm seeing progress slowly, but surely. I'm seeing more subscribers. I'm seeing more listeners. I'm seeing more people share. But I still need that big burst, like that big ass moment, like that moment that Kodak Black had where Drake did a Snapchat video playing his playing his song in the background, or that moment where. God damn how Nicki Minaj let me talk about this because this pissed me off this didn't piss me off but it just kind of confused me so there is a um a dance hall or a hip-hop artist I don't know which one she is um I forgot her name she's some she's some type of um she's some Jamaican brand of she does some type of Jamaican brand of music so three days ago Nicki Minaj 
put on Twitter some lyrics in what I call a uh, nigga pig Latin, but others refer to it as Jamaican French patois, Jamaican Creole, Creole, whatever y'all niggas call it. I call it nigga pig Latin. And like the literally, I mean, let me read it. What it was like, literally, it was something that was just so undeterminable in ink like at all and the girl said when 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 the girl tweeted said oh my god when Nicki minaj said tweet your lyrics girl i'm just going crazy and i'm happy for the girl Nicki minaj was talking about how she was thinking about bringing her on tour and stuff like that i'm happy i think it's i think it's dope i think it's cool that's cool it's whatever but there is no way this can't wait for me hold on let me see if i can find a goddamn tweet let's see what it let me see what it is it was what is, cause it, cause it was it was something so crazy. Like, I granted I don't speak French Creole, I don't speak Patois, so maybe I just don't hear what it was. It says, "You know, I feel ask when you see me, see the house in Siar that I feel me." I swear to God, it says, "You are no I feel ask when you see me, see the house and Siar that I feel me." My nigga, that could have been anybody. Hell, if I hell if I didn't hell, if I knew she was going to if if I would have if I would have followed Nick Minaj and was saw that hell nigga I would have retweeted Nick Minaj I'm like when she retweets when she retweets my lyrics for one of my best songs or shit like that like I could have been anybody's goddamn song half the time half the time when you listen to them goddamn them them reggae hall reggae dance hall artists all them Jamaican Bay, Bayesian in St Thomas Virgin Virgin Island Trinidadian niggas do they're usually just saying like just just they're usually just speaking in broken English it's so confusing to me. So even just right now, I was just, I was literally just babbling gibberish right now. Even that sounded more, even that sounded more interpretable than what the fuck they be saying. Like, it's just, it's just crazy. To me. But I'm happy for the girl, whoever the little girl is. I forgot her name already, but you know. I'm glad she got the hook up. I'm pretty sure she's gonna get signed to whatever record label Nicki Minaj is signed to. She's gonna blow up, and that's a blessing. That's a beautiful thing. But I just personally, I was, I was really blown. I was really, really blown away. Like, what the fuck? Like, what? What? What, what the hell? Like, it just didn't make any sense to me. But it's neither here nor there. Um, neither here nor there. Um, got a lot to talk about today. Got a lot to put tonight, actually. Um. As I'm recording this right now, the newest episode of American Horror Story is on. I'm missing that. I'm going to re- watch it tonight, and I'm going to talk about it tomorrow. You guys know, for those who've been keeping up with the podcast, you already know. You already know for a fact that I have to, I have to, I have to, have to always have a conversation about American Horror Story, Van Helsing now, and also this new show that is an anime show, and a lot of my listeners don't fuck with anime like that, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you were ever to make an exception, if you were ever to listen to JT and say, you know what, maybe this young Negro knows exactly what the fuck he's talking about, maybe we should take his advice on certain topics, you should definitely have Black Clover in your day-to-day watchings. It is so fun. And granted, it's different because I love cartoons. You know? I love cartoons. I encourage any of all of my listeners to love cartoons. If you don't love cartoons, then my nigga, you really have no, you really have no good taste in just rec- recreational programming at all. Like, how could you even live your life just not even enjoying the pleasures and beauty of just cartoons, bro? It's, it's you're, you're missing out on life. Like, like why? Like, how could you? No, no, this life you need cartoons. Cartoons are needed in this world. But um, <laughs> my last episode I did yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, I was like, I was like, I was uh singing, I was uh, I was singing Gummy Bears in Negro spiritual format. I was like, Gummy Bears, these are the Gummy Bears. Gummy Bears was a great cartoon. In the future, when I have three point five beige children. I shall keep gummy bears in heavy rotation on the television screen or Apple TV or hologram screen, whatever the hell I have in 2020, whatever, whichever, whichever comes first, you know, but, um, outside of that, I was watching the speech that Donald Trump gave in South Korea, speaking on the, um, tense situation that we're in right now with North Korea and, um, you know, speaking about how North Korea is, the leader of North Korea is a threat to peace and order and not for not just the United States, but South Korea and the whole world in general, how, you know, in other words, he said, he said in, 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 in white people words, what he basically said is North Korea 
Don't start no shit, won't be no shit. And he actually did a good job. He actually did give a good speech. I'm going to give him that. His speech writer is, he did a good job this time. He actually get, get a good speech. <clears throat> he did he did mispronounce Peninsula. But I'll be honest with you, I'll probably mispronounce Peninsula. I just mispronounce pronounce right now. And I'll probably mispronounce Peninsula a few times. I just pronounce mispronounce and I just mispronounce mispronounce and mispronounce Peninsula. So I already know for a fact that I can't really talk that much about somebody's ability to speak words or whatever or whatnot. But... Uh, it it kind of made me. Th- it kind of had me thinking because he started talking about how the dictator of North Korea, how in essence he has a goal to make his country more or less the sovereign, the sovereign leader of all of the, all of Korea, North and South, and now he also has the goal to conquer the United States. And I started thinking about that, like. In essence, the leader of North Korea, he's angry about something. He's carrying a grudge that his father carried from his grandfather from acts that the United States committed in the North Korean War, which, to be honest with you, and I want to speak more on that, I don't know, for those of you guys who listen to my podcast who are from the United States, who did grow up in, in California, who were blessed to grow up in Atlanta, who were blessed to grow up in Florida and New York, shout out to all you guys who are out there, Philadelphia, I want you guys to send me some Philly cheesesteak recipes. I really, it's kind of crazy to me because... I don't, I, 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 I've, I've attended middle school and elementary school in three different states, California, Arizona, Alabama, Georgia, four states. I never remember. I never remember any of my social studies teacher, any of my history teachers, my geography teachers. I never remember any of them telling, talking to me about the Korean war. You know what I'm saying? Like I never, I remember them talking to me about the Vietnam war. I remember them talking to me about the civil war, the world war one, world war two possibly would have happened if you have a world war three when we were having the desert when we were having desert storm and iraq and not desert storm when we went to iraq in 2003 i remember them talking to me about that all the time i never remember them telling me about korean war which that lets me know that that must have been a really unjust war for you just to kind of just erase that moment in so you see most unjust wars that we have in the country we kind of just throw to the side so because don't talk about them like that i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure in in the south when you go to school if you go to middle school down south in alabama and georgia i guess it is from experience they tend to kind of skate over them when they talk about the civil war when the civil war is brought up in the class they tend to kind of skate over the fact that they got their ass kicked, you know. It is what it is. But I so I was thinking and then I was thinking about that and then I was wondering about like this dictator, he in other words, he has a cross generational grudge against the United States of America. And it had me pondering and it had me wondering how long in situations like this, where you feel like your country or your people, your ethnic group, clan, tribe, whatever you want to, Dunnies, whatever you want to call yourself, when you feel your people have been wronged or oppressed by another group, how long do you have the right to hold a grudge against those people? The reason why I ask that is because there have been times on this very podcast, and there have been times when I've had conversations with people in front of McDonald's because they were homeless and happened to have good game. We were begging me for quarters, but tried to make me laugh, and they happened to have really game, good game. I ended up laughing. There have been times on this podcast where I've talked about how I think that the dictator, Kim Jong-un, how I feel like he's mad about something that didn't even happen in his lifetime. And I feel like that's stupid, and you know, he's just stupid. It's a totally different world now. But then also, Break Devil's Advocate. I know a lot of black people who are still have a chip on their shoulder about slavery. And for the past three generations, four generations, probably we haven't, none of us have had to pick cotton or wear, have chains around our wrists. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, we still have a chip on our shoulder about that. A lot of us still have animosity towards white people about white people about that. And so it makes me want, and, I, and, I, and I'm not one of those dudes. I've always said, you know, that I can't have animosity for, against people who aren't there. Not granted, I can have animosity against people who uphold those same values that a lot of the slave owners or and a lot of the people in the Confederacy who wanted to keep slavery did. So that's why, you know, when I do bring up the topic about the alt right and the Richard Spencers and the um, Ku Klux Klan and the Hammerskins and the neo Nazis. That's why I'll always speak against them is because they were burning back to that same primitive primal tribalism that thinks you're thinks you're a racist so much superior than another group and wants to impose imperialism on them. So I, I that's why I'll always be against them. But with that with that being said, it makes me wonder how long do you have the right to hold a grudge against the people for that grudge against your oppressors oppressors? How long do you actually have the right against holding your oppressors? You know what I'm saying? Because you could argue that you could argue that none of the people who call the missile strikes in the Korean War, 
None of the people who shot the bullets that killed thousands and thousands of people in the Korean War, you can argue that none of those soldiers, none of those generals are breathing right now. If they breathing, they breathing into a tube and they about to die any goddamn way. Hell, if you really want them niggas, if you, would, I'll be real with you. If any of the generals who left, if any of the generals and soldiers who participated in the Korean War are still alive right now and Kim Jong Un said right now, tell you what, we'll throw away all our nuclear weapons, we'll throw all our ballistic missiles away. All you have to do, all you have to do is just give us the people who, who, who shot my uncle, shot my cousin and raped all the girls at brothels. Nigga, send all, nigga, send all of them. Unplug the monitor. Come on, Paul. <laughs> Unplug the monitor, send them in. The, unplug the monitor and plug plug the monitors and load them all up the plane. Like, come on, Paul, come on, Paul. You have one last duty for your country. You have one last duty for your country right now. <laughs> come on, Paul. But it, nah, it's uh, it just makes you wonder. I want you guys to let me know in the comments. Let me know for those who listen to me on SoundCloud or those listening to me on YouTube. Let me know in the comments. I want you guys to let me know how long do you think your people have the right to order? Like, say for example, if you're Jewish, if you're Jewish. What's up, Rosenberg? If you're Jewish, <laughs> Mr. Rosenberg, if, if there's any if there's any Jewish, Jewish person out here named Mr. Rosenberg, um, do you think it'd be okay for your people, Jewish people, to have a grudge against German people in the year 2017 for the Holocaust, or do you think it'd be okay for people who are Jewish to have a to have hold a grudge against Italian people for? I think for how they were oppressed, I think in before Christ times, it is something to be said about. Why does the world hate Jews so much? I never got that. Like even when you, like even when you go to Christian countries, like even when you go to Christian countries, you always see that people kind of have this weird animosity and separatist, anti-Semitic attitude towards Jews. Like, what is that about? Now, when I was a kid, I didn't know that much about world history. I had always summed that up to being just that people were jealous of Jews because if you read the Bible, it says that the Israelites were God's chosen people. And I feel like it was kind of that jealousy because people were like, people who are Christian felt like, well, we want to be God's chosen people, but we're not. And it, which is kind of weird because my my whole interpretation of that verse has always been, I don't think he was necessarily talking about a particular ethnic group. He was talking about people who believe in that religion, but that goes back to what I've always said about Christianity in the Bible. And that's why I've always kind of criticized it as like, at the end of the at the end of the day, the only at the end of the day that book only that book only focuses on like a like literally like zero point two percent of the people who have actually existed in the world. Like all the it literally only revolves around the Middle East, some parts of North Africa, and Europe, like Western Southern Europe. Like you can't not Western Southern Europe, only Southern Europe really. <laughs> It's a bad book to go to for historicity. You know, it's a bad book to go to for historicity. You know, that's why I kind of, I don't know. No, it's just, I don't know, I eat my cup of tea. So it makes me wonder about that. Like, how long do you people have the, how long do you people have the right to hold a grudge? You know, I, I'll be honest with you. Because I'll be real with you. I wish, I will pray to God that no nuclear missiles are fired from one to the other side. I pray to God we have a peaceful night. I pray to God I can have kids and priests. I pray to God that I can not get drafted into the war and achieve my dreams of being the greatest broadcaster of all time. Or at least if the war does happen, let me have my shit set so that way I don't have to be forced to go into the draft and have a full thriving business. But at the same time, I can't understand that. I can't understand if I was Kim Jong-un. And my whole life, because he's only in his 30s, and my whole life, I've been told, fed these stories at bedside about how the United States massacred my people, how they use biological warfare, how they're going to come and get us, how they're going to come get me in my sleep, how there's this one American president named Ronald Reagan with a big ass dick who's going to rape me in my sleep or something like that. I can understand how that would make me hate the United States, and I can understand the logic behind it, especially when you actually have the body count, you know, in the numbers. You actually have a real body count of people who have died. So I think the, the the issue with the United States is, and it's not even really just the United States, it's with any country, to be honest with you. We have a lot of, we have a lot of shit under the dirt. We have a lot of manure. We have a lot of manure under the grass that we try to ignore. We try to sweep under that we've done in the past of the countries. And I feel like the karma of that comes back on us a lot of the time, you know, and it's not just the United States. You know, hell, last I was reading earlier today about how um, Saudi Arabia there, Saudi Arabia is Saudi Arabia accused Iran of selling the missiles that this one organization called Hal Zulut, I, I can't pronounce it, but it starts with an H O, that that they used to shoot at one of the cities in Saudi Arabia. And thank God that the Saudi Arabian missile interceptor system caught the missile in the sky and blew it about the way like a command may I wave. But at the same time, 
needless to be said, you know, they're like, you know, why the fuck are you selling these people missiles that are trying to destroy us? And so there is possibility that there might be a war erupted between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Iran says that they didn't sell it to them. Iran said, I, Iran, 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 Iran said that that could possibly, that could actually possibly be a really black name if you think about it. Iran, but anyway. Iran, Iran says that Iran says that he didn't that they didn't tell it to him. They said that you you mistaken. They got it on Amazon. You can just, that actually is a good question. Can you purchase missiles? Can you purchase missiles on Amazon? That actually is a good question. You probably can. To be honest with you, <laughs> you probably have like some black market version of Amazon. It's not Amazon. It's like something else. Like it's not M. It's like it's not Amazon. It's like like Redwood, <laughs> like Redwood Forest. <laughs> <laughs> like the piranha section of Amazon and like you go there and you can find like all these tomahawk missiles with like three ninety nine a piece or some shit like that. <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. If you like walk down the street. What if you was walking down the street? Say you live in the ghetto of your city, let's say you're living in Detroit, just this rough, terrible city. And you know how you go to the city, you stop, you find crack sales, but if you live in a ghetto for those that have never lived in the ghetto, you can always find a dude selling you a pistol for a very very fairly cheap price you can get a you can get a you can generally get a good you can get a 223 or AK in the right in in the right underprivileged neighborhoods you can get you can pretty much get a good semi-automatic gun for the same price as the Xbox one in somewhere so it'd be crazy if you went down there and like you just saw dudes in the corner selling with big ass like big ass wooden bricks selling tomahawk missiles like bro I got these tomahawk missiles man got these tomahawk missiles man that tomahawk missiles. You want a nigga? You want to kill a nigga? Blood? You send this shit, nigga? That nigga ain't gonna. That nigga ain't. That nigga gonna die. <laughs> you, you ever use a tomahawk missile? It's bro. I'm gonna tell you. I took out all my ops with a tomahawk, bro. Hold on. <clears throat> trying to charge my phone up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, real quick. Hold on. So, my phone charger is not working. That is very depressing. Now I'm three cities away from where I'm three cities away from live at from where I live at with a non-functioning charger cable. Needless to say, I'm very pissed off right now. Oh, well, matters not. What was I was talking about? Oh yeah, talking about whistles. Yeah, my nigga got talking about whistles for the low low. Okay, it's back on. Okay, good. There we go working now okay cool yeah with that being said yeah with that being said no yeah like that'd be crazy if it was like that if you could just like they're probably somewhere like that like in yemen some goddamn where you can go just start waging hold on hold on hold on yeah, there's probably somewhere like that where you can just. Yeah, there's probably somewhere like that where you can just get heavy, heavy missile artillery for like hella cheap on the low. I'm pretty sure I'm positive. Positive there is. Positive there is. Positive there is. Well, yeah. That's I just more of the story is I just hope we don't go to war. I pray to I pray to God. I pray to God we don't go to war. Pray to God we don't go to war because that would definitely suck. That would definitely knock everything out of whack. That definitely would not be good for all of us. But then there's always going to be wars, man. I mean, you know, like I said, I think in the world right now, there's like 30. The last time I checked that statistic, it was like a year and a half ago. But last time I checked, I remember reading, it was like 30, 20. It was like an insane number of wars just going on in the world, you know. But keep in mind, these wars, you got to keep in the concept war. Like when it means war, a lot of time it'll be like a war between two countries. They ain't got it, but 1,000 people in between both of them. So it's like really, if you have a lot of kerfuffles. Kerfuffles is going on. You have a lot of you have like a lot of kerfuffles in between little small countries, but besides that, there's nothing really significant, you know. I'm not just worried. I don't know. Mm. I pray. I pray to God. I pray to God. I pray to God. I pray. The power keeps cutting off on this cable. So anyway, with that being said, is there anything else I want to talk about? What else am I missing? 
Anything else on my mind that I want to get off my chest? Um, I guess nothing in particular. That's pretty much everything I want. It's pretty much everything. It's pretty much everything, more or less. Um, I think that that's pretty much everything, more or less, as far as anything serious. Uh, oh, yeah, I just want to talk about Lil Yachty. Listen to an interview with Lil Yachty earlier today. I am really, sh- I'm really surprised at how much he's matured as an artist and as a person. I think my interpretation of him was so much more different than my interpretation of him was so much more different than I. Well, it wasn't necessarily different because I always assumed he was an intelligent person. Anytime I meet somebody who, anytime you see somebody who's from down south and they speak more or less without the southern accent, I automatically assume that they have some level of like higher intelligence. But he actually was pretty dope. It was interesting to hear him on the interview talk about these these rappers who are coming up like the trippy reds and the the doo wops and i don't know i don't listen to any of these niggas right now it's weird because the podcast he was on is called the um the podcast that he was on was called it's called the um the no jumper podcast and that podcast in essence what the dude does is he interviews soundcloud rappers and it's weird because listen to that podcast the dude who hosts the podcast He's known for being one of those people, one of the people in media who's in the know. Like, he's in the know of knowing who's the next hot rapper, who's the next hot R&B star, who's the next hot singer, etc., etc., etc. et cetera. And, you know, he interviewed, he, he, he interviewed Triple X and Tentacion before he popped off. He interviewed a uh, dude who sung the Red Roses song. And it's weird because it's like, in 2017... My interpretation of like on who's popping, who everybody listen to is so much more different now because now we live in a day and age where there's less and less people. There are less and less rappers who at the mid level, everybody knows about. I mean, it everybody knows about unless you grant, unless you're doing something region like say, for example, I live in Northern California and from Central California to Northern California, maybe in L.A., I'm not sure. One of the most popular acts out here is SOB by RBE, which is a rap group composed of about four or five uh, young niggas. And, you know, they got slaps. They got slaps. In essence, what they are is the modern day version of E40 in the click. And you put E40 in the click is because he. And in essence, you probably don't know who E40 and the Click is because E40 and the Click was another regional rap group, but they were popping in the 1990s. So in essence, they're kind of like a they're kind of like a they're kind of like a throwback to them, and they're from Vallejo too, which is where I'm from too. And that was where E40 and the Click were from too. That's what we say. All like I said, just a modern day version of the Click, minus a female who does vocals. They got a dude who does vocals named Young T.O. He's kind of dope. And they're the only, they're the only they're one of the few examples I see in real life of somebody who who theoretically everybody in my, in proximity that I see knows about more or less. You know, I did meet these two girls who play soccer at this high school nearby me. They had no idea who the fuck them niggas was. I was like, you ever heard? Of, I was like, you ever heard of Mike Sherm? And somebody they're like, no, you know. But like I say, but even in like I think now that we live in this world where we have like these tribes and these independent, like we all live in like our own like we can own like live in our own bubbles. So I think a lot of the time no such thing there is no such thing nowadays as like a there is no such thing nowadays as like a pop and pop and rapper who like everybody everybody well there is such a thing as that but it's not the same like back in the day like and back in the day i'm referring to like from i'd say about 1970 up until about 2009 back in them years when you had somebody like when kanye west was coming up the Kanye West was coming up. Generally, everybody knew who Kanye West was. Uh, was when Lil Wayne was coming up. Generally, everybody knew who Kanye West. Uh, generally, generally, everybody knew who Lil Wayne was. Trippy Red. I've heard of Trippy Red. I've heard of him. I've seen. I pass the video all the time. But theoretically, like I really, like I really don't pay attention to this dude's music at like at all. You know. But you know, there are people who do. There are independent tribes who do. And it used to be a thing where if you didn't listen to dude's music, it was because usually because you'd be in the older age, you you generally be in the older age generation or younger age generation. But even that doesn't apply now because, like I said, just you have so much music being thrown at you right now. And like prime example, my favorite my favorite album of this year was Starji Zinga by Chia Ging. He's a Pagoji singer. You probably have no idea who the fuck that is, but that was my favorite album this year. Starji Zinga. Starji Zinga. Dun dun. Well, y'all think I'm humming the song, the Hedgehog theme song, but Taji Singer, which uh, Taji Singer means I'm a little late. 
But it's, it was it was a really good it was a little it was a really great album. But keep it snow like a cheaper better than me that I'm beige. But keep it snow like a cheaper better than me that I'm beige. You say so keep us in my skin. So, I love Chia King. He makes great music. If 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 for any other if there's any, for any for nothing else, I'm happy I learned Portuguese just to be able to listen to his music and have some type of interpretation of what this nigga is saying. Like he makes really great music, but. That is a good. Well, I don't feel like asking you a music question. So yeah, the the world is changing. The world has changed as far as like how we process music now. You know what's weird too was like I was watching Everyday Struggle yesterday. I was watching Everyday Struggle yesterday, and I watching Everyday Struggle. And I was watching G J Academics and Joe Biden talk about just talking about like album sales. They were talking about how Chris Brock, Chris Brown's album, his six hundred and seventy eight song long album sold like sold fifty thousand song it sold fifty thousand units um last week or something like that. And that blew my mind because like I said, I remember dude you know, you talking about you selling fifteen to fifty thousand units albums. Our albums used to sell and this wasn't even that long ago, like Ten years ago, ten years ago is a long time. If you it's ten ten years ago, your label would have dropped you for so. Your label would have dropped you so fast. You would have been dropped. Your contract would have been canceled. That would have been considered a super flop. Nowadays, if you said like Kendrick Lamar sold the most rap albums of everybody this year was four hundred thousand plus, but catch is catch, but catch is ten years ago, nigga, that would have been considered a flop. Four hundred thousand was even gold. That would have been considered a flop. Like, it, it really shows me how much the world has changed now. Like, streaming music has really changed the game a lot. You know? You know? even But even now, you can say that even now. Like, right now, like, my dream was to be a radio person. But now, I'm talking to you through a podcast. I'm using a podcast to achieve that goal. Times have changed now. And I like, I like the convenience of the podcast because I'll be real with you. We live in a day and age now where I don't, I don't, I'll be honest with you. I don't fuck with appointment television now. I don't fuck with appointment television. I don't fuck with appointment podcast. <laughs> I don't like waiting for something. I don't like doing that whole scheduling at 3 p.m., 4 p.m. I have to watch something. I'm tired. I used to hate that going up. Like when I used to, when I used to come home from after school and I'd watch the, the weekend cartoon, the weekday cartoon, they would come on usually in between like 3 p.m. And they usually go from like 2.30 to 5 or 3 p.m. to 5. But it would take me 45 minutes to walk home from school. So I wouldn't get home to about 3.23 or 23.24. By then, Pokemon is over and I'm just pissed off like... It, it just would be like this whole it was just bad it, it was just bad just bad like it, it was i would just be pissed off like it was it was it sucked but at the same time like but at the same time like this is you know it is what it is it is what it is i have i have i have, it is. that is that that is one dope thing about being born in the 1990s is you really get to see how technology has changed the world like even the fact that we all have cell phones like I remember a time when every cell phones are low key like I don't know if you ever watch those sci-fi movies those sci-fi television shows where like you see somebody that have like a palm pilot or some type of device to like direct them around the world or be their GPS guide around the universe cell phones are low key like our own little miniature avatars or literature um Familiars, you know how um, in some stories, like in some sci-fi, witch stories or magic stories, for those of you guys who actually get them, pussy, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> but in some stories, you have like a um, like a familiar avatar that helps you channel your magic, channel your chi to create spells and commit alchemy and all that stuff. Phones low key are like that for us. Like with my phone, with my phone, I use my phone to record podcasts. When you guys see my YouTube videos, and I'm using my phone to record my YouTube videos, I'm using my phone to record my podcast. Right now, I'm using my iPad, but generally nine times of this, I'm using my phone to record all of my content. Like, and that's crazy, bro. The thing in the movie of a day and age where you can do that, like, that's so ill to me. Like, it's 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 crazy, man. Like, that's why, man. It's even like you know. Regardless of how many brick walls you encounter, regardless of how many moats you fall in, regardless of how many times you tangle with the crocodiles, it's no reason why there is no reason in the world why you should feel that you cannot achieve your dreams. There is no reason in the world why you should feel like you are so like there's something stopping you because we all have the ability to. Like now we you can make if you want to be a photographer, your phone can take pictures. If you want to be a, a if you want to be a video editor, your phone has video editing apps. You need to get started. If you want to be a video game creator, you can do video game creating on your phone. You want to be... I, I got a green screen app on my phone. I got a green screen app on my phone. Like, that's how lit my shit is. That's how lit I got my shit right now. So, it's pretty dope, man. Like, I 
I'm not, nigga, I ain't play, I, I ain't playing with these niggas, but, I don't know, like, it's, it's dope, it's, yeah, I'm really in it, that's why, that's why even though, that's why even though yesterday I was kind of down the dumps, because I was like, man, my podcast is nowhere near to where I want to get it to audience-wise, and I'm still forced to do a job that I don't want to do, I still took time to say, I still took time to say, you know what I'm going to have. I'm still going to have, I'm still going to have absolute faith in what I'm doing. I'm still going to have absolute faith in my dream because I think that I think that all it's it's like Mozzie said, supply pressure. You know, supply pressure. I think that I'm as I take one step and two steps and three steps, I feel like I'm getting more closer and more closer and more closer to my dream. And I know for a fact that it's just a amount of time. You know, my yo, you know how this podcast might go viral tomorrow today. Which if it does, I'm gonna feel so bad because I have some of the goddamn mic breaks in here that it's embarrassing. I apologize about that. It's just that, you know, you know, my equipment, you know, my equipment is shitty. You know, this is if <laughs> I'm recording this with an iPad and the phone. Now granted, theoretically I would prefer I would prefer mo- way more, way more, much better the advanced technology than what I have equipped with me today. But, you know, uh, I, I am forced to work with with what life has brought me. You know what it is, what it is. Now, there was something I wanted to talk about. That is so much shit I wanted to talk about today. It is so many different things I wanted to talk about today, but it just all just rambled up into like one big ball of just mess. Like, do you believe? Do you believe what I? Do you believe? Do you, believe? you know what? Here's something I was thinking about. No, no, no. I don't think I don't think you're mentally ready for me to introduce that concept. I don't think you're mentally ready for me to introduce that concept and break it on your mind. Well, let's throw it out there, okay? So, you know how we live in a world more or less that's operated amongst, among science. Like, everything you generally functions with science. Here. We used to live in a religion function. There used to be a time in the history of mankind where we still slept under trees. Still slept under trees, still bathed in rivers. A lot of people still do that. They're called homeless people. But there was a time where we still when we believed in those when we were in that phase where religion dominated the world and everything we use religion to explain. Like say for example, we use religion to we use religion to explain why it was why there was a flood. Somebody pissed off the river guy, somebody pissed on the river and pissed off the river guy's commander, and he was like, Well fuck all y'all niggas You know. That makes me wonder how many people were hanged, bruised, whipped and tortured because the village chief or the tribal leader accused them of, of, of frustrating the gods and bringing their wrath upon their people. Like I wonder how many people, for all those, not, not some, I'm just to say, round of applause. I can do with all the people who got hanged for some bullshit like that. And some, <laughs> and some prehistoric age. On some prehistoric age. On some prehistoric age. On some prehistoric age. Sailing witch trials type shit. And it's kind of weird because I was thinking about this earlier, like, you know, I have a cousin, you know, God bless her, her name's Angelique, and she's really, really religious, like, really, really, really believes, devout, true to heart, will lay on that cross, believes she's going to heaven 1,086.8%, and, you know, she's one of those people who thinks all all things witchcraft is demonic. She thinks voodoo is demonic. She thinks all these different things are demonic. And you know, when you look at when you look at the list of shit that Christianity tells you is demonic, whether it's voodoo, whether it's uh, idol worship, or anything hell, Native American religious beliefs, African religious beliefs, other white religious beliefs, North mythology, Greek mythology, pagan religions, even the word pagan. In essence, what they're telling you is. Any other religion besides ours is demonic. And I didn't realize until I got older how crazy that sounds and how offensive that sounds to tell people that our God is the correct God. All of you niggas shit is just ridiculous. All you niggas shit is like buffoonery. (laughs) You guys there call your God a God. Our God is the real God. Our God is the leader. Yours is a clown. Yours is an imitation, a pale imitation of what a true deity is. He holds no feather to the likes of ours, and I really kind of um I didn't. It took me until it. I really didn't think, and I really didn't understand. I really didn't understand until I was older about how offensive that is to a lot of people, and and it, and it is offensive. Like I always tell people, Christians, that it is offensive to tell people that you know, you know, it is offensive because in essence, in essence, particularly for minorities, Christianity was forced upon us. Christianity was forced upon us, so 
it's kind of weird to see the people who it's kind of weird it's kind of strange to that we worship that we we so devoutly believe in our oppressors religion oppressive religions i'll be honest with you i think i think in the united states i think i think in the united states and in mexico particularly afro-americans and mexican-americans and mexicans in mexico are generally more devout believers in the christian faith and the catholic faith than white people are i'm just gonna be honest with you I, i'm gonna keep 100 with you i don't know that many overly religious i don't know that many overly religious white people i don't know that many i, I, I know a little i don't know that many overly religious white people who force their kids to go to church all the time and truthfully believe. versus where black people we almost have this we almost have a super stiff stupid stitches sorry we almost have this we have a superstitious paranoid belief in Christianity to the point to where like even the even the craziest gangster ass nigga who went to shit who shoots six or seven niggas who probably loading up his Uzi right now and this Draco got his two through threes in his trunk about to go let it slide on them niggas on Conway Street right now that nigga even kneels and prays to God. I'm just I'm like I'm telling you, like it's it's, it's crazy. Like it's kind of crazy how he's kind of weird how that works, you know. So I don't know. You know, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, this is not funny. This is not funny. But I I just thought of this right now. So do you remember the Texas shooting that took place on Sunday? Of course you do. Twenty people got killed. Yeah, it's hard to miss. On Fox News. There was some commentary taking place between one guy, one official. I can't remember what he was or what he, what his qualifications were. He just was there and he was talking to these two news anchors on Fox. And what they had said, what it was kind of, it was kind of funny because was it like one of the ladies said she said you know and i was thinking about now i was talking to my people i was talking to the people in the office earlier today and i said you know it's sad that we lost all those lives but the one place i will really want to get killed is in the church you know where i'm asking for forgiveness or i'm asking for peace and you know i i, I just want to be with my, i would just want to be with my lord and savior in heaven but now they're with god now they're in a better place that woman i do not know her name i do not know that anger's name they ripped the shit out of her on Facebook. I'm talking about ripped her a fucking new one. I'm talking about hard. I'm talking about hard, hard, like hard, hard, like this stupid, ignorant white bitch. What the fuck she talking about? But in essence, you can't get mad at her because all she is is a woman who truly believes in Christianity. She truly believes that she preaches. So I have to respect that. Now, it's kind of weird. That's what I'm gonna tell you. That's how the society society is moving into a totally different direction. You know, I know society is moving in a totally different direction when I see how stupid and how backwards minded, how primitive people who are Christian sound on television when they express their beliefs. Like, you, like I'm like, I'm really sick of it. And, I, and to those who listen to me live right now who are Christian, who are Muslim, I have nothing against Christianity. I have nothing against Islam. Islam, Islam I have nothing against Judaism. I have, no, I have nothing against these religions, you know. I have nothing against these religions. I just have my own personal beliefs now. You know, you know, I just, I just, I think, I really, I think with religion, I think with religion, I think with religion, I think with religion, I've always said, I think mass religion, multiple mass religion, I've always said, I think in and of itself is a primitive man's, is a primitive man's requirement. But at the same time, I think that modern day society needs religion because I really think, I really think, I really think that the society, humans as a whole, cannot function independently without following some type of tradition, without having some type of acceptance group. I really feel that way. You know, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I've been saying what I'm about to say. I've been saying the same message, the same message for the last four or five weeks straight. I'm probably, I'm probably on almost every single episode. I'm going to repeat it again. You would be shocked. You would be in horror. At the acts, at the terror, at the terroristic acts, at the things that other people would commit in this country against one another, if there wasn't laws to already stop it. Slavery lasted for 360 plus years. There were literally 10, 12, 13 generations of people who saw black other humans getting beat like slaves, sold like cattle, and people were like, okay, it's cool. And it's not, and I'm not just to say white people, it just goes across the world. Just slave, matter of fact, if you go to, I was reading an article today, um, I was reading an article about the European immigrant crisis. You know, you have a lot of immigrants who are running in from Nigeria and from Senegal who are trying to immigrate to North, North, North Africa to get to Italy. There are a lot of people who are being smuggled up into Libya. They're smuggled to try to get smuggled from North Africa to Italy. And a lot of the time when they get there, and a lot of the time when they, when they get to Libya, the people who, who, um, 
the people who catch them or receive them, they'll end up kidnapping them and selling them into slaves, selling them into slavery and having them as slaves. So, or it's, it's, it's crazy, bro. So, slavery, slave, you know, human labor is a thing, you know. You still have sweatshops in China where they're getting paid five cents a day to uh, to make Nikes and LeBron. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot in the world. No, now, speaking of sweatshops and speaking of laboring, did you guys see that article that came on about how polluted India is, how, about how polluted the air system is in India? Do you see how polluted India's air system is? Look at the picture and see how dusty and foggy it looks. Look how it looks like some dystopic apocalypse, post-apocalypse movie. You see how bad it looks? I'm going to tell you right now. This is exactly See how bad it looks? I'm going to tell you right now. This is why, and I've always said, this is why I do not want to bring coal. I just is why I do not want mass production of coal in the United States of America, because I do not want our country to look like India. I do not want my country to look like China. For those of you guys who are Indians who are listening to this broadcast, for those of you guys who are Chinese who are listening to this broadcast, do not take offense to this shit, but just simply Google Chinese pollution and Indian pollution. That's what I don't want my country to look like. Even Mexico City, you go to Mexico City, it was some article I read. I was reading about Mexico, it was about Mexico City and it was about Fresno, California. It was one of those two cities that said that like the pollution, I think it was either in Fresno or in, in Mexico City. The pollution is so bad there that, that people's lungs, if you grow up in Mexico City, your lungs actually grow and your, your lungs actually grow and develop in a totally, in a different way than other humans' lungs do to accustomed to the, um, to the pollution levels there. Like, that's how polluted the air in Mexico City is. And you know what I'm going to tell you? Generally, as a, that sounds kind of crazy, but generally as a human, you might notice it sometimes, just subconsciously. You can generally tell when you're in a city that has polluted air. You can generally tell you're somewhere. You, this is for me personally. I can generally tell when I'm in a city that has very polluted air or just a very dirty city. I can always, because I have very sensitive skin. I very my skin is very sensitive. I'm talking about like it needs like I have to put a little aloe vera gel on my skin every single day or it just it just starts getting dry. It's, it's bad, especially now because it's winter time now. So if I go to like a lot of the times if I go to a city and like if I go to a city and the air is like really really polluted or like just it just smells really bad, my skin will start to itch. Or if I touch somebody's hand and their hands literally my skin will start to itch. So because of that, I have a pretty good, I have a pretty good, I have a pretty accurate bullshit pollution, uh, dirty bullshit when it comes to, when it comes to pollution and stuff like that. Because of that, you know, that was one of the gifts the guy gave me, gift and a curse, more or less. But I wish I my phone is. My phone is charging so slowly. My phone is charging so slowly right now. It's irritating me. But I guess I'm going to log off. I want to record for a long time, but I can't because i got to upload this podcast to you guys and get this to you guys ASAP. ASAP. So it was a pleasure talking to you guys all. I apologize for all the cuts and clips and breaks that this episode did, but I you know, just was busy. But um, tell me what you guys think. Show me the love. Tell me what you guys think about the episode. And it was beautiful, beautiful talking to all of you guys. Um, my name is JT. This has been the People's Paradise Podcast, and I love you, and thank you for being a part of the family. You will probably refuse me, but I have one last favor to ask you, and no, it is not to send me a box of Lucky Trump cereal. Thank you for sending that to me, Devon. The favor I have to ask you is, could you please press the share button on this podcast? If you're listening to me on SoundCloud, could you press the share button there? If you're listening to me on YouTube, could you please press the share button there? If you're listening to me on Facebook, could you please press the share button there? The reason why I stress that is because I'm trying to expand my territory. I'm trying to let the whole world know how great I am with this, how talented I am with this. And I cannot do that without your assistance. You know, I'm putting hours and hours of work in every single day to let the whole world know who I am and how great I am at this. And I need your help to do this. So with that being said, my name is JT. Thank you for listening. It's been the People's Paradise Podcast. five bucks the five dollar all-star meals stop by carl's jr and get yourself one today price because space may vary price is higher in alaska and Hawaii. that's not included before we go any further in the podcast literature right now the reason why i'm speaking to you like as if 